Okay, um, so good morning or good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to welcome you all and thank everyone for attending. I'm Shifan from Urban China Network at Columbia GSAP. We are a student organization operated by urban planning students aiming to create an international communication platform for Chinese urbanism across multiple disciplines. So today remarks our um, seventh year of Urban China Forum. And I would like to thank our sponsors, GSAP, Urban Planning Program, Columbia Global Center Beijing, and the Weatherhead East Asian Institute for making this forum possible. Under this special circumstance, we're proud to be able to host a two-day US-China forum here at this virtual meeting room with all of you. This year, our theme revolves around the city's response to COVID-19, as Chinese cities have been in the center of the discussion. We hope to discover multiple aspects of urbanism in the pandemic to reflect on the past, review the present, and reimagine a post-COVID future. The topic today is management and pandemic urbanism. The schedule has been posted in the chat box. There will be Q&A sessions following each presentation. Um, we're honored to be joined by leading practitioners and scholars. Senior urban designer, Mr. Rui Qian from ACOM Greater China, Professor Qing Mingzhan from Wuhan University, and Professor Ying Long from Tsinghua University. The presentations will be followed by a panel discussion moderated by Professor Wei Pingwu, Director of Masters in Urban Planning Program at GSAP, and she is also the UCN's consultant. With that, I would like to hand over to Professor Wu to welcome you all. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to GSAP, uh, welcome to Columbia, and welcome to uh, the Urban Planning Program. Yes, it's remote. I, uh, every year we do this in person and we have a wonderful occasion. But, you know, if there is any silver lining for the pandemics, we are now talking with everyone in China. So I am very, very proud of our students who continue to uh, keep the Urban China Forum alive and keep it very exciting. And, uh, you know, the year 2020 is going to go down the history as an extraordinary year, crisis after crisis. And I think Chinese cities have been through a lot and have been almost coming back to normal now but it's a little bit hard to actually think hope and promise on this side of the Pacific. It's really quite depressing here. And so I'm actually very much looking forward to this evening or this morning and tomorrow's because if there is another silver lining of this crisis and pandemics is that global South and global North the boundaries are really blurring and we can learn a lot from China. Particularly, I think we are going to, I wanted to highlight three issues that we may be uh, discussing a little bit more later. And I hope to also listen to the scholars presentations to look for some answers there. One is climate change and how in this time of pandemics, when we are worried about being too close to each other, being too crowded, how can we continue to make progress towards that we already made under climate change before the lockdown? And second, especially on this side of the Pacific, that spatial and social inequality is really showing its ugly faces under the pandemic. And we know where people live, where people, uh, who people are really mattered in the life and death in this pandemic. And that's something I think cuts across all the countries that are uh, experiencing the pandemic. Last but not least, this pandemic also reveals how important public investment is in cities, in its people, 
and in the infrastructure of all types. And in that, in that light, Chinese cities, again, are far ahead of many. And so I'm very much looking forward to listening to the presentation. So I want to thank all of the speakers for making the time to come and join us on the weekend, especially right after the national holiday week. So we want, I really want to thank you very much. And I really uh, look forward to your presentations and discussing with you how from these three angles and many more that cities on this side of Pacific can really learn from you all. So uh, very much hope a, um, for a very successful forum. And again, I wanna thank all of the students and all of the sponsors. Thank you so much, Wei Ping, for giving us so much validation. And thank you to our speakers and attendees for joining this our event. Without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Tian Ray to give us a presentation about resilient communities. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Uh, good morning and evening. It's a great honor for me to share uh, online via GSAP's uh, uh, forum. I think it's a, a great annual uh, meeting for scholars and practitioners to talk about uh, Chinese uh, urban development changes uh, through this uh, platform. Uh, today, uh, I changed my uh, uh, title of speech of my sharing a little bit. It's COVID-19, the birth and rise of new public in China and to the world. Uh, it's actually uh, connected to my practice and uh, research recently uh, uh, through the uh, pandemic period. And it will be four, uh, four parts. The first one is about the changes and challenges by COVID-19. The second is about why planning design matters to uh, this pandemic. Uh, the third one is, is about the birth of new public. The fourth one is about the rise of new public. First, uh, as we are approaching to 2020, uh, we all know Wuhan is a, is a, is a heart, it's a, cent a central place uh, to, uh, 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 to the world. And we see the outbreak of COVID-19 throughout the regions and to the world. Here we see the maps. Uh, this, this is actually not the uh, most up-to-date map, but it's uh, showing how big and how uh, uh, expanded uh, the COVID-19 was. Uh, through the past few months. And this is uh, the picture I, I took during uh, February and, uh, and March in Beijing. We can see uh, 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 the close connections between spatial planning and design with the public policies uh, uh, are failed actually during that uh, most uh, severe period, period in China. And we see the uh, market uh, chaotic, chaotic uh, situation happening in China. And it is obvious that uh, a considerable amount of people do not have access to the knowledge uh, about how they should live in the city uh, facing with this, this, this kind of emergencies like this. As well, um, many of municipalities has no uh, appropriate reactions in emergencies like this to guarantee its citizens, its people, uh, with an open, efficient, and trustable, safe, civic public realm. That's why I focus my research and practice uh, to civic space, public space, uh, in, in my, my, my uh, uh, latter part. And here we see uh, how China react. This is also what Chinese government being proud of for, for a long time. Uh, but, but as Professor Wu just said, we see, we see a lot of uh, uh, achievements through this uh, uh, fight towards COVID-19. We also notice a lot of problems. Our cities can recover from this kind of public health and sanitation crisis, and thus to build up capabilities towards any uh, similar or other impacts in the future is a key question to Chinese government and other governments around the world. And more so, uh, we also would love to see the uh, progressive actions from part all the parties in the cities and sectors to care all the people psychologically and heartfully, not 
only statistically, like the map and the, 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 the form shows. And the second part is why planning design matters. I think I don't have to uh, spend too much time uh, uh, to, to uh, 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 explain this. Looking back, it, it is not difficult to find the clues that uh, contemporary urban planning as a profession rooted itself a lot deep into the contribution of the uh, aggregation of population resources and the productivities and where the problems and challenges on public health and sanitation have been de derived. And that's why uh, the uh, uh, contemporary urban planning as a major in US uh, was, was firstly defined by the uh, Olmsted Junior uh, at Harvard. And it, it is one of the uh, great purposes of the park to supply to the uh, hundreds of thousands of the tired workers who have no opportunity to spend their summers in the country and specimen of God's uh, handiwork that shall be then inexpensively what amounts were to in the White Mountains area. This is actually shows the essence of urban, why urban planning uh, means so much to uh, public health, not only sanitation, but also uh, uh, socially and psychologically health of the whole society. And third part, I will, I will come really uh, quickly to the birth of new public. Before we, we uh, 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 jump into the uh, uh, jump into my observation, I, I would like to ask some questions. First one, we need to uh, make the clarification of public, private, and open closed space. Uh, designers in China often uh, often misunderstanding these two set of meanings: public, private, open, closed. The open space can be private. That's how we see a lot of open spaces are wasted in China. And what is real public is a, is a question to not only professionals, but also to the uh, gov government's officials and all the uh, 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 enterprises and even the normal people living in the cities and using the cities. The second question is, can public space produce economically? Uh, we, we know uh, in past few years, since 20, uh, uh, 15, 2015 or 2016, uh, the public space, especially the street space, being torn down, being changed vastly in China, like cities in Beijing. But after, right after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic fight, uh, we can see the Chinese government, central government, from central government level to uh, encourage this kind of street mart happening again. And they, they, they're encouraging this kind of uh, economic activities back to the cities. So right now we, we, we have the questions as professional to the government. Why public space after pandemics like COVID-19 can produce economically, but not before. So at least uh, public space should be trusted as kind of a toolkit for government to, to, to make the governance effective. But also for people, it's a, it's a trustable place for them to live in the cities safely and without any uh, concerns and worries. This is how I define the new public. It, it composed with the pu new public spaces, public policies, and public engagements. And how they, how they are being uh, uh, constructed, it, it, it will go back to the uh, 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 origins of how we understand the infrastructure of the cities. We know uh, we use infrastructures to uh, form the skeleton of, 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 the, of the city development framework. So we see this uh, diagram from the infrastructure of infrastructures, like uh, light, air, water, fires, soil, data, this kind of basic elements to generate like resource, ecological, resilient, information, municipal, and social infrastructures. This is how we planners and designers normally describe infrastructures. But the key part is how they generate the effective public services and related public policies, public engagement opportunities to the real public people. And we can see how new public will go back to influence the people's daily life, everyday life. My screen is done. And given that uh, uh, I, uh, came up with uh, some suggestions 
about how 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 should we uh, uh, go forward of new public spaces should be done. And uh, given the time limit, I will I will not uh, read uh, uh, article by article, but I will I will share the most important part, the the strategy part, to integrate different progressive technologies into uh, multi scenarios. A group of multidisciplinary team under leadership and uh, uh, coordination from the government will have to draft up two critical documents. The first one is action plan of the public realm administration for uh, epidemic period, outbreak period. And the other one is about the master plan for resilient public realms, which in China, most cities don't have these two kinds of master plan or action plan, especially the action plan of how people use public realm appropriately. And the second one is about the public policy. The key strategy is about the municipalities shall uh, coordinate and draft up the new master plan for resilience, for urban resilience, with a set of uh, uh, accurate policy toolkit and package. Um, uh, I guess most of the professors today here uh, will understand in China uh, the, the logic be behind the public policy making is kind of top-down logic. It's not the problem uh, uh, or, or the question-oriented logic. So our pu public policy normally cannot solve public problems. And for long, for long time, for decades, Chinese government is trying to use inappropriate public policy to uh, 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 interfere the private realm. Actually, it is, that, that's, why, that's why we can see a lot of uh, 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 ugly images or, or uh, uh, unhappy news during the pandemic period in China. The third one is uh, uh, the public engagement. The key strategy is based on the local condition and uh, we need to grasp, grasp the local governance unit, communities uh, in Jiedao, in, in China actually. Again, for uh, volunteering activities in order to be closer to the normal city users and help them to uh, 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 go back to normal everyday life. This is how we uh, uh, suggest to the government with uh, uh, we, we can see the listed uh, actions. And we also uh, suggest this to actually uh, 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 undergoing uh, projects to the Beijing New Subcenter uh, 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 for this uh, new, uh, 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 new set of strategies and actions to test whether it will be useful. Because in the, old, uh, in the constructed area of Beijing, it's really, really difficult for us to test out uh, 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 to test out the, uh, the new strategies. And now we are trying to, uh, using this kind of uh, uh, spatial assets management platform, which we're collaborating with the local government, trying to uh, list out what kind of public space, public realms can be used, can be operated, and can generate uh, the social value and economic value. And thus, we will follow followed with the two key, key set of documents including the public realm uh, administration action plan and the resilience master plan of the whole region. The fourth one is, uh, I, I was trying to uh, talk about the rise of new public. Given the suggestions to Chinese government and during the uh, pandemic period, um, my friends and I took, the, uh, uh, took part into the uh, competition of the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, reimagine Brooklyn Bridge competition and given that, into these contexts of uh, uh, living with the COVID-19 and uh, living in the period post-pandemics. We see uh, New York City in the COVID-19. I will go through this part quickly because the time is uh, uh, limited. We see, we see a lot of interesting news like uh, uh, the mayor of New York City. Uh, they don't want to open, open up the streets and uh, uh, the local, the local people, and uh, the city council speaker, Corey Johnson, said New York City needs to open streets to pedestrians for public health, public safety, and for our collective sanity. New York City should be leading to the way in this, in, in this, in this issue. And after a long talk with the uh, city government, with the uh, mayors. Uh, the mayor Blasio finally agree announces 30 more miles open streets making New York City a nation's leader, finally. 
this is actually a, a, a rise of the new public space, of the sense of new public uh, 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 in the cities, how, how we should fight with uh, 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 the pandemic, the, this kind of public crisis. And after that, uh, uh, let, me, let me draw to uh, draw your attention to the uh, competition. When we're talking about public space, well, I, I understand the mayor of New York City actually uh, when he disagreed with open up the streets as public space because it's actually all about money issues. In every city we see, uh, 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 we see the problems, unfortunately being afraid of both cars and people, Mayor Blasio just refused to open the street. But the team would rather recall, uh, as reported back to 1880s as below, uh, thus to foresee this bridge uh, as reconnecting great cities, great people, and great spirits that all great things in this country, in, in states, being built on. That the belief in the democracy and commonwealth of uh, the uh, 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 public, val public values, but not only in the physical way, but also connect, connect her from uh, uh, the two, two territories, two, two parts of people living in New York City. That's why we uh, define the new public by the new technologies, as we suggest something we suggest to Chinese government that we also want to try into uh, the New York City context with this kind of uh, uh, kind of mild strategy from bottoms up way to suggest more kind of uh, people, every, every uh, uh, group of people living in the city and every groups, every uh, uh, sectors uh, using the city and managing the city can also contribute to the reimagining the uh, uh, new Brooklyn Bridge. This is how we uh, uh, pro reprogram this new public space by the new technologies. Also, in this in this discussion with my teammates and with uh, the Allen Institute, with uh, with the uh, city uh, uh, government representatives, the data security is uh, is uh, is a sensitive problems and challenges to this kind of strategy and design, uh, 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 design representation and design execution. I think this will uh, relate much to uh, Professor Longing's sharing uh, afterwards. And finally, uh, as this kind of, uh, in China, we use a top-down strategy to suggest government directly to use uh, public space as the uh, uh, governance toolkit and comparing to in New York City, we use this kind of uh, bottoms up strategy to take part in this kind of competition. And we talk to local people, we talk to uh, uh, representatives from each communities. Uh, we see the difference and common, common things uh, in how people understanding public space, the new public space, new public in different worlds. Uh, and that, that's an ongoing research that I've been, I'll be uh, working uh, uh, closely in the future two weeks, uh, actually with ACOM's leadership team, uh, maybe in China right now, in Beijing, we will, have, uh, we will have a similar public space project, but it's still confidential. Uh, and I would love to welcome all the professors, all the guests here to uh, pay attention to our update on ACOM WeChat account. Okay, that's my sharing today. The time, the time is too short. Thank you so much, Mr. Chen Ray, for your um, sharing on U.S. and Chinese cities planning. And now let's enter the Q&A sessions. So the attendees, please feel free to use the raise hands feature under the participants tab so you can ask questions or type in the chat box so we can ask them for you. Um, maybe I'll get started with a question. Um, this is really interesting. I see the coverage of public space and which reminds us how when we study public space in many US cities, we call it very police, meaning uh, how you use public space is generally not uh, completely at your free will, if you say, you know, if you put it that way. So I'm very curious in your research and in your work in China, whether there have been significant reconfiguration of public space that you see that could potentially continue into the future. Because I think 
the pandemic condition wouldn't be just temporary. I, you know, many of us now true, true. realize this will be going on for a long time. So how do we conceptualize road and street space, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That both benefit sort of the economic interest, but also the public interest. So, so it's a different kind of way of thinking. Any So really interested in your thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you for a question. Uh, actually, I see uh, 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 I see the pandemic actually as an opportunity for Chinese professionals to redefine uh, public space in China because we, we understand in Chinese government system there are many many different definitions to public space to public. That's a problem actually. We don't have private. We don't define private. How can we define public? This is a core problem uh, 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 of the issue. But given the pandemic. Uh, challenges by COVID-19, uh, we actually see a lot of uh, uh, project opportunities for us to illustrate how we should understand public space uh, in our everyday life, in our city life, like the street space, like the community space, like the xiao uh, uh, in the open space, the gated community space. Uh, it's actually all public space. And how, how, how should we uh, uh, approach to the uh, spatial strategies, uh, uh, to this kind of space, to to uh, uh, as you just said, the the pandemic is not is not temporarily. It will it will be long uh, existing with us. So actually, we we have this great opportunity to use this top down system to talk to government directly, to talk to our clients as uh, practitioners, for them to understand what kind of public space they should have first. And then we can show the uh, uh, presidents, we can show the actually built up projects, the physical public space to the normal uh, city users. And then we are, we, we, we are actually fulfilling the role of urban planners as a connector between uh, 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 administration, between authorities and normal people in China. I think this is a, 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 my answer to your question. Thank you. We have a comment in the chat box. So while New York opened the street to pedestrians and bikers, Chinese cities use gated communities to lock people in the residential units. Based on these facts, do you think the pandemic leads to a chance to open the public space or the strengthening of control from Jay? Uh, that's two way thing, I think. Uh, uh, if, if as, as designers, we were trying to push the definition to the public space. <laughs> uh, then it will be uh, then it will be better for for us to to open the public space, open more public spaces for people living in the city. But actually, during during especially uh, uh, February and March in Beijing, uh, based on my observation, a lot of communities are just like gated jail. It's not even gated communities. It's like jail. People uh, get into their get into their neighborhoods or where they want to get out. Uh, their neighborhoods is it, it, it's a challenge for 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 them for 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 their everyday life. Even when I walk in streets during the uh, when I take the pictures of Sunny to an area, the picture I showed just now, uh, there will be policemen and community person uh, just running into me and asking me, uh, "Where do you live? Do you have?" your personal ID and you should go back home, don't walk in streets. But it's very ironic, given, given the guidance from the government, uh, uh, people should stay uh, in the open air, uh, we should open the window, we should uh, stay in the uh, ventilated place. But if we all stay in gated communities, it's much more dangerous than walking in the streets because there's no people there. So this, this is uh, 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 the conflict of the public space, the paradox of the public space in China, actually. And that's why uh, I make up this, uh, I came up with this kind of comparison using two kinds of strategy to uh, 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 research public space in both China and the US. Thank you for your answers.
So um, just after that question, um, regarding the mental state um, during this lockdown, how do you think um, the public space should play a, play a role in the sitting that? Well, where, well, we have another question coming. We have another two actually. So from Ben, we're dying to know what has become of the dancing grannies. They are one of the pleasures of visiting Chinese cities. Will there <laughs> be um, public space for them? They're at least as nice as the dancing dirt bikes of NYC. They, they have they have their space now, already. Yeah, even 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 still, the, the use of public space right now is not that free uh, as pre COVID nineteen. But 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 they already have their space uh, to dance freely. <laughs> okay, great. And um, another question from Jing Hao. Hello, Mr. Chen. Through your experience, what are the ways? local government can allow more citizens to engage in the urban planning process, especially during the COVID era. And do you think the government and the citizens might have different set of value when it comes to urban planning? Uh, uh, I, 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 I didn't have time to uh, expand my research, given a special role of myself, uh, 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 especially in Beijing, they have a new institution called dedicated planners to each community, to each uh, 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 a government level, the, the, the smallest government unit in China actually. And we are using this kind of institute, this kind of institution, this kind of uh, uh, system uh, to engage more public people into the planning process. And I myself actually dedicated planners to uh, three communities in Chaoyang district. So that's how I uh, uh, execute my research and uh, uh, public space optimization projects in Beijing. Yeah, we, we, have, we, we have the uh, uh, channels and uh, uh, systems to engage public, but still it's not enough. Uh, as I, I think as urban designers, as practitioners, we should try more uh, to collaborate with professors in universities like uh, Tsinghua, like uh, Beijing University of Civil Engineering and Architecture, this kind of professional schools. And also we need to talk more to the local uh, enterprises, local corporates uh, uh, together, uh, take them, talk to the, to, uh, to the local governments. That's how we influence the government officials, trying to uh, uh, giving them the clues, giving them the uh, basic knowledge of public space from different aspects. Okay, great, thank you. I think we'll have to move on to our next speaker. Please welcome Professor Qingming Zhan and his experience on the Wuhan CD's um, COVID handling experience. And we'll leave any question in the chat box um, toward the discussion panel session. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to meet up with you online. Uh, it's a, a good opportunity uh, to show cases uh, what's happening in Wuhan. Uh, many people are focused on <laughs> the uh, pandemic center, uh, starting point of Wuhan. And uh, actually, uh, I was arriving in Wuhan from Hong Kong uh, 30 minutes before the announcement of, of lockdown. So I've been staying in Wuhan for more than half a year uh, from the beginning of the lockdown. So I um, ha have a, a close look at what's happening in the neighborhood, in the city, in, uh, and, and the connection between different cities. Uh, the, the central issue of my talk is about to look at the, the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, and, and with consideration of transportation and uh, accessibility. Uh, to connect this, uh, all these elements and see uh, after uh, the event and what we can learn from a lot of experience and a lot of cases. Uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, cases in Wuhan and the uh, uh, connection of uh, cases in uh, mainland China only. Uh, I haven't got data to look at after the, the, the global cases. Right? Uh, and uh, uh, the three issues I may, may mention during my talk, and one is that uh, the uh, interregion transmission in early days of COVID-19 
uh, outbreak. Uh, if we look at uh, the, the, the outcomes of this lockdown measure and uh, level one response, right? And second part, uh, we will look at closely in Wuhan, uh, the center of the outbreak and the uh, network agglomeration. And third, we will also look at the transportation and, and, and in connection with the transmission, uh, what we, we may attempt and what the, the, the uh, approved proposal could be come up of this kind of understanding. Uh, Actually, if we look at the interregional uh, transmission of early days of COVID outbreak, uh, we may still find some connections between the measurements and the, the result effectiveness of these uh, measurements. Uh, for example, if we compare the cases in, in the, uh, what happening in uh, similar cases uh, in uh, 2003, uh, that's a SARS outbreak, it was uh, uh, after a uh, few weeks, it, uh, uh, it starts going up, the, the, the number of cases, like this, uh, the blue lines, yeah, it takes a longer time to gradually come up, the figure. If you look at the, the COVID-19, uh, that's the blue line, uh, the, the, the yellow line, you see, it's, uh, after a few weeks, it's come up ra ra rapidly, right, spread, it's uh, much faster than SARS. So, the, the, uh, the windows for us to react is uh, actually uh, very uh, tiny. Uh, we have to do it uh, efficiently and quickly. Uh, that is the, the difference between uh, these two coronavirus. And if you look at uh, uh, the time uh, line, uh, this uh, red line is the, uh, the, the, the few weeks uh, outbreak in the beginning. So the, the cases start very quickly. And after the, the, the uh, uh, measurements of the lockdown of Wuhan, so the, the big number of trips drop quickly, right? And during the lockdown uh, period, the travel have been uh, uh, minimized in certain level. And then it's, uh, the travel start a bit uh, up in the later stage, right? This is the, uh, from the timeline. <coughs> Sorry. And if you look at the possible uh, uh, dispose of this uh, COVID-19 in China, uh, we have uh, uh, this quote from a paper from uh, the magazine of science. Uh, you have four cases. The, the, the uh, uh, real cases, this uh, yellow, uh, black line, the with uh, Wuhan travel ban and with level one response. The actual real cases. So the, the, the number of cases uh, remain uh, low. Right. Uh, if that's uh, with that's a uh, travel ban, but uh, without uh, level one response, you will see uh, it's uh, in the beginning it's a low case and it come up, and the later stage it may rise. Right. If that's uh, without travel ban, but with response uh, level one response, that's a uh, uh, blue line. It goes remain a uh, uh, relatively smaller number. And if without travel ban and without level one response, it will come sky high, right? That is the worst case we don't want to see, right? So uh, from the uh, uh, those uh, cases, we could say the travel ban have a almost equivalent uh, effect that uh, as compared to this level one response. But you cannot apply uh, the ban alone. Uh, the level one response is also still necessary uh, in, in, in Chinese cases. And if you look at the, the, the number of cases, uh, uh, first and second, and third and fourth week of uh, uh, January, uh, you can see that the number of these uh, uh, cases uh, in, in Wuhan, uh, uh, this uh, dark uh, yellow, uh, shows it's about, uh, in the highest uh, percentage, so, uh, around 50% of cases are come from Wuhan. Uh, but in other weeks, uh, uh, something like uh, one third of the cases are uh, traveling from directly from Wuhan. That means uh, about 50 or 60% uh, of travel cases are not directly from Wuhan. So uh, if we say lockdown, uh, Wuhan can play an uh, important role, but not all uh, dominant uh, from the figure as we can see from here. 
and I just show some uh, examples. This in original travel uh, active cases in the first week of January, Wuhan and surrounding area, and, and uh, also other important city like Beijing, Hong Kong, and Changsha, Shanghai, and so on. And, and if you look at the, the travel activity case designation uh, of first week, also in, in the surrounding areas, but the number is a uh, little bit smaller. And if you look at the second week, the travel case uh, have reached in much more cities, and it's uh, also destination. Uh, the, the start uh, not only from Wuhan, Wuhan is a big one, but not only one, right? So many uh, uh, cities ha had the arrival of these uh, 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 cases, right? And if you look at the, uh, the third week, the Wuhan remained the largest number that's uh, originally traveling from Wuhan, but still a, a lot of other Chinese major cities are also uh, the, the origins of the traveling active cases, right? This is the destination travel. So the, the travel destination is even uh, wider and, 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 uh, and cover uh, much more uh, uh, cities and, 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 and villages. And it is the fourth week of, of uh, January, and, and you can see uh, this uh, origin of, of this uh, uh, travel uh, from many cities are much larger uh, than uh, the Wuhan. So because uh, the destination of the uh, cases are uh, Wuhan has been eliminated, but uh, uh, other cities remain uh, moving. So uh, you can see the timeline changes of, of these measures. Okay, uh, to a, sh a short summary, uh, regional trade flow uh, impair of nationwide travel ban. And uh, we have to uh, look at exactly uh, how people are moving uh, in between from Wuhan and between other cities. So we can uh, take measurement more accurate and to, uh, to, uh, to reach uh, better uh, effort uh, our, our outcomes or our, our results. Uh, so, so the, this uh, post-event uh, uh, analysis is still important to find uh, the ground truth and the reality, how we can do it uh, correctly, and, and what kind of scale uh, all these measures have to be considered. Okay, second part, I will uh, concentrate in Wuhan, because Wuhan is the outbreak center, and uh, we also look at uh, the network of the connectivities and transportation facilities uh, between Wuhan and other cities in, in, in mainland China. Here we look at the uh, uh, two uh, uh, scale. One is Wuhan and the neighboring region. Because we have uh, 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 most of these uh, uh, migrants, uh, migrant workers are from uh, metropolitan area of Wuhan, including uh, several cities around Wuhan, just very close to Wuhan, and uh, villages and, and small counties around Wuhan. So that is uh, the majority. That's why uh, the cases from Wuhan are, uh, in fact, this area heavily. Uh, and if you look at the, 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 the bus connections between Wuhan municipality, it's a, it's a uh, uh, white area, and, and it is uh, the accessibility of these uh, buses. There has daily commutes uh, between Wuhan and the neighboring cities in, in surrounding areas. Uh, those are the, the, the most of cases are come up from out of Wuhan. Right? And we have also these uh, uh, connections or numbers. Uh, there's a, a city uh, and, and it's, uh, uh, it's originally the people are from this neighboring city and where they work uh, in, uh, in the district of uh, Wuhan. So you see the Xiaogang and Huanggang are the two major cities that uh, 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 contribute the, the, the migrant workers in Wuhan and some other cities as well. See, see this is the surrounding area. Uh, uh, most of these cases are reached uh, those uh, neighboring regions at first in the early days of Wuhan and uh, also somewhere between the lockdown before and after lockdown. Uh, if you look at uh, this area, we, we could see the, the connectivity. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very efficient because we have a high dense of highway and, and high dense uh, that's uh, uh, easy uh, travel with uh, high, uh, high speed tra train. 
uh, and also uh, uh, can be a private car or uh, train and even uh, uh, this uh, 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 normal train, right? If you look at this, uh, uh, the figures, let's say Xiao Gan, Huang Gan, received most of these uh, uh, active travelers, and, and the most of cases are also proportional to this uh, number of travelers uh, originally from Wuhan. And if you look at uh, the, from a large scale, and if you look at the uh, uh, nationwide, Wuhan still play an important role. Uh, th this is the source of migrants uh, from, from China. There are uh, people from uh, the neighboring province, they also find job in Wuhan. If you look at, uh, first of all, it's a uh, uh, Hubei province and the neighboring province like Jiangxi, Hunan, and Chongqing, Henan. Yeah, neighboring province has contributed quite a lot of uh, migrants uh, come to uh, come to and work in Wuhan. And even we have with uh, uh, air connection with Beijing and Shenzhen, Shanghai, and, and so on, they also have a, a big number of the travelers between Wuhan and those cities. And if you look at the, the, the proportion or uh, uh, a percentage of top uh, 15, uh, 50 orange of travelers in China, Wuhan is even is not the highest one. It's a, it's a ranking somewhere here. And the top one may be Shenzhen or Beijing or Shanghai. They, they say, uh, have front line uh, cities. Wuhan uh, is quite, la quite large of these numbers, but uh, uh, not, not in the top. So uh, because of, of Wuhan is in the central location, so the connectivity and, and the, 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 uh, uh, the, the travel opportunities are high, so they can efficiently uh, move from Wuhan to any places in China. So uh, uh, let's say higher, relatively higher number of travelers and have a, a very high efficiency of connectivities and transportation facilities. So transmission ratio is uh, remain high from Wuhan. Right? And that is the uh, uh, Wuhan daily uh, uh, trains uh, connection, uh, number of trains between Wuhan and, and low cities. You can, these uh, dark colors uh, have more uh, very frequent uh, connection, uh, even look at the train alone. We have more than 200 trains between Wuhan and Changsha and Zhengzhou, right? And more than 100 lines that connect to Chongqing and Wuhan. So mo most of these people are traveling by train, uh, normal train and high-speed train. And this is the destination uh, corridors between Wuhan and, and uh, if you look at the mainly uh, because of the high speed train. Uh, so this uh, corridor ha has uh, multiple cases, if you, you can see. That it's, that's the uh, second week of January. Uh, so you, you can find the route of, of, of these uh, travelers move around. And here you can see also the, uh, the outreach uh, efficiency of uh, Wuhan network uh, efficiency. Uh, one hour, Wuhan can reach this number of uh, uh, people, uh, uh, and if it is four hours and six hours, so, so the red line is the uh, city of Wuhan. You see, almost in the top. So all, every more hours, Wuhan can reach more places and more uh, population can be connected, right? The, the number one, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, Beijing, right, in, in the end, but in somewhere in between four hours and six hours, Wuhan is uh, still higher than uh, that's in Beijing. So you can see Wuhan is a very uh, important uh, uh, transportation hub in, in mainland China uh, because of its uh, location. Right? And uh, if you can look at the uh, connection, weekly flights from Wuhan to uh, uh, long distance uh, uh, cities uh, between Wuhan, Urumqi, and Harbin, and so on, they are mainly uh, connected by uh, uh, air passengers, passenger flights, right? And uh, nearby cities in the region, uh, most people travel by high-speed train because it's uh, four or five hours can reach most of the major cities uh, in, in China. And that is the destination of uh, active cases, uh, second week of January. You see, even in, in northwest of China, we still find cases uh, that, that's from uh, travel from Wuhan. Uh, it's mainly uh, by, uh, like by uh, taken by flight. Right. And if you look at this uh, uh, optimal, uh, uh, 
optimal, uh, optimum route. Even you travel by train, uh, uh, by flight, uh, by, uh, by car, uh, and still you have a higher opportunity to go through uh, this region, especially Wuhan, right? Uh, you see, uh, if you want to go shorter way, still about 31% of the chance you have to go through Wuhan, right? So it's uh, from other uh, point of view, Wuhan is also uh, uh, hub harbor for uh, this logistic network, right? You cannot go uh, beyond Wuhan, uh, uh, otherwise you will take a much longer route, right, uh, as an alternative. So Wuhan uh, remain a very important uh, hub. And, and, and a short summary, uh, it, the, uh, the inter-region transmission may be about more than uh, migration uh, because the travel between uh, start from Wuhan and uh, destination as Wuhan uh, are still a big number. So we have to consider both, not only the migrant workers, but also the traveler business uh, men and, and also uh, students. Because Wuhan has uh, uh, one million uh, college students and postgraduate students. Uh, lucky enough, uh, in the first two weeks of, of, of January, most of these uh, uh, students in Wuhan have already moved out of Wuhan, uh, went home. So uh, very few cases have uh, been found among those students. Uh, that's a very positive signal. If those students leave Wuhan uh, a bit later, then uh, that may be uh, another big issue because uh, one million students is a big number. And third point, uh, we will try to associate the transportation and uh, in transmission. Uh, see uh, what can we uh, uh, suggest, we can, what we can predict, what we can learn uh, to improve our framework uh, of, of this uh, kind of analysis and study. Uh, actually, uh, there is a, a frame, this is the, the proposed uh, framework with to, to evaluate this kind of uh, connections. Actually, we, we make it three parts. There's the vehicle evaluation, uh, stop by evaluation, and destination evaluation. Uh, they, they, they may be uh, 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 studied uh, uh, differently, uh, and, and the, the, the courses may be different. And we have this uh, SIR data, we have migrant data, and this travel OD table, and the proper ability uh, dis distribution and potential act active cases between O and D, and we have a potential active cases on roads, and all this comes uh, with these uh, three uh, type of evaluation, we can come up a much clearer, or uh, more comprehensive outcomes of this kind of prediction uh, of this, uh, 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 as uh, we call it, improved SIR model. Here, so we consider the roots uh, in the uh, migration analysis. Uh, we have a root file. We, we know all these connections and path, uh, 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 including air, uh, railway, and, and, and highway connections. And then we have the, all these points of, of locations and boundaries, for example, and we have weighted root point. And then we can project time uh, and, some, uh, and time consumption and to the root points. And then we have total time assumption and then we come up with uh, these uh, uh, connections and, 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 this, and this, uh, departure and arrive time and, and see uh, if we can come up with uh, uh, more realistic predictions. Yeah, this is uh, the, the, the some uh, delays and then we, uh, the, the we can still uh, act uh, 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 in the early stage to, to provide the kind of facilities and take some uh, precaution uh, measures to try to uh, stop and contain uh, the uh, coronavirus, right? And here, so we we uh, we try to, the, the 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 our considerations to try to add this SIR with intervention and and, and plus uh, accessibility and see if we can do better job in, in in these cases, right? And we have have some uh, early stage of studies if. We, that, that is the actual figures as a prediction. That's a, that, that's a case is in some uh, surrounding cities, like Incheng city near Wuhan, Yunmen, Xiang'an, 
and uh, and Sibi, Tungsang. All these cities are uh, traveling uh, from Wuhan by one uh, around one hours. And you can see the cases and prediction uh, very likely uh, align uh, together uh, these two uh, figures. So the improvement uh, can be uh, seen uh, it's uh, kind of significant. And because time limits, I, I could just show uh, this much. Uh, and thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we should like to uh, learn example from your side as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. It was really interesting seeing the correlation between accessibility and the COVID outbreak. So now we are entering the Q&A session. First of all, we have a question from Ben. Would be interesting to know if any architectural, urban design, social differences on average between Hankou, Hanyang, and Wuchang have affected COVID rates in those three parts of the city, as if rates differed in Manhattan and Brooklyn? Uh, from a uh, figure uh, I learned, because the outbreak center is uh, related to the uh, uh, seafood markets, the seafood market is uh, actually located in Hankou. So you can find most of cases start from Hankou. But because of the distribution of the hospital, all these uh, uh, active cases, uh, they have to run into hospitals because many hospitals in Wuhan, uh, that's also a hotspot uh, during this early stage. So the, the, the cases are running into the hospital and. Uh, Inside the hospital is a source of transmission, and many uh, other patients are also uh, being uh, affected by the virus. Uh, so uh, you can say Wuchang, uh, Hankou, and Hanyang are more or less equally distributed of the cases. Uh, not only the beginning, uh, the, the, the outbreak center, but because of the hospital. Uh, most of these hospitals are specially uh, distributed among three parts of the city. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, really much related to these uh, uh, city configurations and also architecture or, or these uh, physical uh, site settings. I think connectivities of uh, uh, infrastructure and, uh, and this uh, people concentration are more uh, over related. Uh, I, I would like to mention that Wuhan Hankou railway station and uh, Wuhan airport are two uh, uh, very uh, important nodes for transmission because uh, Hankou railway station just uh, one kilometer away from the market, the, the, the seafood market. And there are two uh, high uh, uh, metro line connection and uh, high speed train connection between Hankou railway station and airport. So people can easily, efficiently travel to those uh, uh, transportation hub. So many cases uh, can be found there get effect in this uh, uh, crowd uh, transportation hub. Thank you. We have can, a question coming up. Uh, I think I can ask one question. Uh, uh, Professor Zhang, your research uh, is very interesting about the connectivity and the uh, COVID cases. Um, because we know um, the COVID cases, uh, these cases uh, data are not readily available throughout the internet. So is there any uh, resources or channels we can get those uh, data source? I think that would be a uh, great resource for uh, scholars, practitioners, or especially students studying urban planner, urban planning like us. Yeah, uh, this is an important issue. Uh, so far, we can access to this uh, uh, total number of cases uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, city uh, and uh, municipality. Uh, we're still not able to access to these cases in neighborhood level or in building level uh, sure. because of this uh, uh, maybe <laughs> kind of consideration of uh, uh, people may, may be become more chaotic. Uh, so they didn't relieve all the uh, cases uh, in public domain, especially, especially in Wuhan. People are big afraid. But I can tell you, in, in all the uh, gates, the community in Wuhan, about one third of community, uh, they have no any cases. Right? 
So this is also important. We uh, this uh, kind of gated uh, community provide kind of facility to to check the temperature uh, when people move in and we move out. Uh, provide the kind of additional uh, measurements to contain uh, virus and transmission uh, in Wuhan. But uh, maybe in the future, uh, we, we may we hope we can uh, uh, be able to access to those data sources. But the government agency, they have, may have a specific group of researchers. They may look at this uh, detailed data sets, uh, I, I think. Uh, yes, I understand the government could, agencies, they could have uh, epidemiological, uh, pretty precise data about the patients, but of course, due to the privacy issues, or maybe the right. Right. Uh, yeah. maybe the government issues is not like uh, yeah. But uh, uh, neighborhood still know uh, where is uh, the cases because if there's a neighborhood, the corridor have been closed, oh, okay. and they so at least uh, they, they are they know someone in the cases neighborhood. in the in the neighborhood. Yeah, and they also provide a, a, a green plate to each uh, gate community. That uh, that's uh, free of these uh, cases, so people can uh, can 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 walk around the uh, the, the campus and and, and the in, inside the community. So give some open space for the local residents to relax a bit, right? Uh, and th those uh, uh, online shopping also provide uh, necessary uh, foods for for people, so people are not scared with uh, without food and water and electricity and good enough is also that uh, uh, connection uh, internet connection provides confidence for people to stay at home right uh, and you can see that recently uh, recent years wuhan also in increased a uh, large number of this uh, uh, green space uh, we, we we have a slogan uh, uh, recent will reach green area in 500 meters and rich parks in one kilometers, right? Uh, and let's uh, largely uh, have been achieved uh, so far. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for the questions. We'll now move on to um, Professor Long Ying's presentation on smart technology. I'm sure Professor Zhang has already developed love for Yogan Noodle as he's a Wuhan local. But now please welcome Professor Long Ying. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation, and today I am delighted to be here to introduce our very preliminary research, actually. Not so well-established research. Uh, it is still ongoing, and um, we do not even have a draft for, for this research. So the title is about smart technologies for pandemic urbanism. Uh, so anyway, it's very preliminary, and uh, I like to uh, briefly introduce uh, what we are thinking uh, for technology, COVID-19, and pandemic urbanism, I mean the relationship, and what is the role for our urban planning and urban design in such a background. So, so actually, I think the previous two speakers have mentioned a lot for COVID-19 in China and in the world. I think that is, that really shifted uh, a lot. I mean, uh, I think COVID-19 has impacted a lot for our daily life, uh, city operation and urban management, as well as urban planning, urban design, even the public space. So that is quite strange to us. Uh, however, uh, I think COVID-19 is one side, and on the other side, on the other facet, we are experiencing the new industrial revolution, uh, which is called the fourth uh, industrial revolution, uh, uh, composed by a lot of emerging or disruptive technologies. So anyway, uh, currently in such an era, technologies are ubiquitous and everywhere. And Professor Zhan also mentioned technologies really helped a lot in Wuhan, I think in China as well. So when we are looking back to the past 10 years, we can see a lot of new things. I mean, a lot of things we are using right now. I mean, 
um, um, I think the technologies, uh, emerging technologies, we are familiar with right now, only have one really limited uh, history. Uh, like the, in the past 10 years, I mean, uh, we have booming sharing economy, e-commerce, big data, artificial intelligence, for example. When we, are, uh, when we compare the COVID-19 with, uh, I mean, 2003 SARS outbreak, actually at that time, I was a graduate student locked in Tsinghua campus. And I think at that time, we do not have a uh, very interesting or helpful smart technologies at that time. And right now, in uh, 2020, uh, I think the era is different. So now we also have, uh, have, uh, have some comparison for 2003 uh, SARS and the 2020 COVID-19. And uh, we can see the booming research on smart technologies like big data, cloud computation, mobile, uh, uh, mobile internet, for example. So anyway, I mean, uh, smart technologies are everywhere right now. So, uh, which is my topic today. And so I like to ask what roles do smart technologies play in the process of COVID-19, for example, especially in China? And to what, what extent can they solve the existing urban problems like development, uh, planning and design management as well? And how should they be improved in the future? So I think in such a background, smart technologies uh, contribute to resilient cities, smart cities, and healthy cities. That is my, my precondition for, for the research uh, today. So, I, uh, so in, in my research, I like to, to, to collect the application cases happening in China and combining with COVID-19 from the perspective of smart technologies. And we actually, we have collected thousands of cases in China. And uh, so today I like to, to propose a framework for smart, resilient and healthy cities driven by smart technologies for combating with COVID-19 for pandemic urbanism or for the post-pandemic urbanism. And now I will take China's uh, cases as an example to build a case base uh, to illustrate how smart technologies helped in the past months. I mean, during combating stage and the, the post-pandemic, uh, I mean, supporting urban operation uh, stage. So that is my, my, my main purpose. And we also have conducted some literature review. We can see a lot of extensive papers on smart cities, resilient cities, healthy cities, and we also have some overlap for the concepts. There are also some observable, uh, I mean, literature on, for example, the smart resilient cities, smart house, healthy cities. So I like to focus on the central one. I mean, I think uh, the smart technologies contribute to all the three contributes. Uh, all the three concepts. So actually here is the, I, I have to admit again, uh, a very preliminary framework we are proposing. Actually, first we have the, a lot of smart technologies and the smart technologies has, uh, have different channels to exert impacts for different stakeholders in China. For example, the government, for the technology, uh, uh, technology companies, professionals, and even citizens to support urban planning and management, to support urban life, daily life, and the city production. And I think, uh, I think the impacts uh, are workable, are, um, can be divided into different stages, like the normal stage for cities and high risk stage and the post pandemic stage. And the outcome, I think, should be going to more resilient, smarter and healthier. So that is the framework. 
So here come to here come to the methodology. Actually, we have searched a lot, heavily searched the whole internet, uh, like the media reports, I mean media coverage, uh, academic papers, white papers, government messages, social media information. And finally, we have collected around 2,700 cases, application cases of various types of smart technologies in China. I mean, in different cities as well. And we also have tagged all the collected cases, I mean, around 3,000. For example, the category of technology, I mean, the type of technology, big data, or robots, or the automation system, serial numbers, subjects, the birth location, the summary of the effects, I mean, reported effects and observed effects. And we also have a brief description for each case we collected. And the service objects, action stage, I mean, and action scale, and the action application sites, as well as the source. And the table is illustrating our, I mean, the template for, for each case. And here we have proposed, we have put three, three here. And and in in total, I think we have categorized all the smart technologies into ten categories, like big data, robots, uh, immersed me, uh, media, mobile internet. I think mobile media, uh, mobile internet is very uh, important currently. I think it is quite important since currently we are using the online meeting and supported by mobile internet and artificial intelligence, internet of things, I mean the sensors, sharing economy, blockchain, cloud computing, and even intelligent construction, like the Huashenshan hospitals in Wuhan. Uh, yeah, anyway, in total we have 10 categories right here. And, uh, oh sorry, not 10 categories, we have already expanded our case base. Currently we have 14 kinds of smart tech. And the first is big data. I think data, uh, I think big data are very important since, uh, I mean, big data help us to display data, of, I mean, the situation for epidemic situation in different city and in different country as well. And analysis and forecast epidemic situation. There are uh, already a lot of research currently. And monitor and assess the disease, uh, decision making and analysis, uh, this is for public, uh, to analyze public opinion, to understand how people are feeling, were feeling, uh, I mean, during pandemic uh, period. And artificial intelligence is also important to support or to improve the quality of analysis, the accuracy of forecast, and to analyze virus and develop medicine. I mean, that is also uh, very important. And also online uh, medical consulting, intelligent outbound surveys and uh, identify signs and symptoms without touch. Yeah, uh, since uh, the interaction between human, human beings are very, uh, are very important to prevent during very serious situation actually. So anyway, I think AI also helped a lot for, for people, for government and for medical staff as well. And the mobile, Internet, I think mobile, mo mobile internet is uh, of the most important smart technologies during this period. It helps a lot for online working, working from home, online education, which is very common even right now in China. And the telemedicine and also online meeting like this today. And even online entertainment. Actually, several internet companies develop some interesting apps building uh, COVID-19 in uh, China, actually. Uh, and you can also uh, karaoke together. I mean, cloud, uh, uh, karaoke, cloud, dancing. So which is very interesting. And we also have the cloud computing. Actually, I think Baidu, Tencent have significantly expanded the 
cloud computing capacity during the past months because of the increasingly uh, increasingly and I mean demand for 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 online something and the, I think Internet of Things maybe uh, Internet of Things are emerging I think uh, maybe for example uh, 10, 10 years later or 20 years later if we we have similar global pandemic issue I think Internet of Things I mean ubiquitous sensors would be able to play more uh, I think much more important role and however in the COVID-19 period in China I think it is already uh, 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 helping a lot actually for example application of the intelligent sensors in the cabin hospital there are some observed or uh, I mean application and also contact information for transfer stations transport relief materials efficiently and smart health care I think and the robots actually there are a lot of messages news media coverages in China about the application of robots in different places like the hospital like the delivery issues and the disinfection robots and the intelligent guidance robots so I think uh, robots uh, really, I think robots uh, really uh, help a lot to some degree. Uh, but uh, my concern is maybe uh, currently some robots are, are, are showcased maybe. And the MR, we are uh, AR applications, they are also emerging in the past months, like the simulation training remote display of products and the scenes to support, for example, to support selling a property and to support visit a museum remotely or online. Uh, actually, it is also happening in China. And the intelligent construction, like the Huo Shenshan, Lei Shenshan hospitals, uh, like the beam applications in the construction process and the rapid and automated uh, construction process. I think intelligent construction also have a lot. But it is uh, uh, emerging, I think, and also so, so widely application. And blockchain uh, is working in the background, I think, that they uh, also help, uh, like the backtrack rules and data and the entire, yeah, integrate uh, resources and data efficiency in, in the process, in the past analysis. And cyber security as well, as well as 3D printing, nanotechnology and the new energy also working for combating and for the so-called semi-normal or normal operation for cities right now in China. And the sharing economy, yeah, the uh, sharing economy is very important, I think, like the food delivery, sharing, uh, uh, sharing transport, like DB, like mobile, also help a lot. You can imagine in Wuhan, uh, I mean, in uh, earlier in, in March, uh, so maybe no, no vehicles, no private vehicles allowed it. Uh, but uh, uh, I think DB has, uh, has also contributed a lot. And I think a lot of people are you were using the sharing bikes on the streets. And that is very interesting and important to support daily life. And we also, uh, I think we also have summarized the, the empirical uh, findings uh, from this around the 300, 3000 cases. So first of uh, the subjects, I mean the proposed subject who conducted the smart technology application. I think the government is um, uh, uh, one side. And uh, however, we should not forget the technology co-company, like the internet company. Uh, I think they are playing a very important place uh, in the process. And the first location, I think the, uh, like the Beijing, Wuhan, which have uh, very uh, good capacity for technical development. Yeah, uh, some of them uh, were birthed in Beijing, Wuhan, Shenzhen, Shanghai, etc. And also the service objects. Uh, some 
Uh, I think some application, most of applications are directly for citizens that are very important, I think. And some of them are for, for companies and some for medical staff and also for government management and, over, and operation. And action scale, some of them at, uh, I mean individual scale, community or neighborhood scale, and most of them are for the city level and the country, uh, country uh, scale as well. And action stage, we can see uh, around the uh, two third applications are for the pandemic prevention and control stage. And some of them, one third, uh, around one third are for the, the post pandemic stage in uh, China, I think, like to support uh, the city to go back to normal, to support returning to work and the production process. And so anyway, so, so today in my very preliminary study, actually I think just a material <laughs> collection and summarize to some degree. Uh, I think smart technologies, uh, smart technologies uh, really help a lot, I think. I appreciate, personally, I appreciate uh, smart technologies a lot. Since in this February and March, when I was locked down in my home, I think smart technologies I have mentioned today helped a lot helped me and my household a lot to, to support my daily life and the working actually. I think. And I was also seeing, uh, and, and I, uh, actually in China there are also extensive discussion on how urban planning and design can contribute to pandemic. So uh, when one journal invited me to, to, to write a paper or report, so uh, my, my, uh, I just, uh, in, my, uh, in the invited paper, I, I just uh, summarized the smart technologies application rather than the urban planning and urban design. That is very interesting. Uh, however, I think the urban planning and urban design is also very important. However, comparing to, to technologies, I think technologies may be helping more to us or to our cities. So finally, uh, so if you have more interested, uh, more interest, uh, you can uh, also download our open public, uh, I mean, report together with Tencent. I think two months, uh, two months ago, Tencent Research Institute and my lab together we uh, released the report on future cities from the lens of space. We have the uh, English version and the Chinese version, and uh, uh, more information is available in that report. So actually, I think to summarize, I uh, so today I advocate a lot for technologies. I think uh, I think technologies are not everything. As anyway, and the, uh, and the technologies are not always doing good to us, to our human being, to our cities. Uh, uh, in, in some cases, but they are ubiquitous and disruptive. And in, they, real, they really help a lot. So how about our urban planning and our urban design can do? Um, I think we should welcome, uh, and we should, we should blend or merge technologies in our planning and design. For example, uh, so before we have the spatial intervention and the placemaking to develop a better public space or better city. And I think in the future, currently we have already observed some uh, very interesting cases. Digital, in, uh, uh, digital innovation should also be, 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 be blended into our urban planning and urban design process. Actually, we have the other research on, on this way, I mean the triangle. So, okay, so thanks for your attention. Hey, thank you so much, Professor Loin, for your presentation. And now let's enter the Q&A session. Um, we have Bo Yang Dan asking, how do you evaluate the weaknesses of big data services under China's epidemic control? For example, China uses digital health certificates such as Luma in the prevention, the green um, QR code in the prevention and control of the epidemic, which everyone can easily obtain through mobile apps However, there are many news reports about many confirmed patients with health certificates, which mean that the green QR code is not completely credible. 
Yeah, so actually today my research, uh, my research is at very macro level, macro level rather than micro level. So in my lab, we actually we do not have very specific research on evaluating the performance, the accuracy of apply, applying big data technology for, for pandemic. So I think there are already a lot of discussion on the weakness. I think everything has two faces. So uh, currently from right now, when we observe the situation in China for the pandemic, COVID-19 issue, I think they really help a lot, like the big data, the Yu Ma, the Jian Kang Ma, I think. Currently we do not have the, the internal cases. I think, um, um, I think it works, uh, but however, for the privacy issue, is the other side. We should we should consider it uh, carefully. Uh, but how to do? We do not have research. So for the question, we do not have very concrete research. I am not able to answer correctly and accurately. Thank you so much. Right, great. We have another question coming up. So. Um, Ying Long's talk has many interesting details, but raises one very fundamental question for architects. There are many nice lectures uh, across town from Columbia at the NY Academy of Medicine. Ying Long's talk seems equally appropriate for both locations. How does an architect or urban designer or planner actually integrate Ying Long's list of tech into the built environment? Yeah, uh, I appreciate Ben's question very much. I think that is very interesting. So since I have been working on combining technologies with urban planning and design for around 15 years, I think the past 15 years can be divided into two stages. For example, uh, I mean, for the former 10 years, I think we have the computer-aided system. We also have the planning support system. At that, at that stage, Technology is technology. We use technology to support urban planning and design, just the support. I mean, what is support? We do not really need it. Maybe it just can speed up the planning and the design process to some degree. However, however, right now, technology has been blended into our daily life and our city space. For example, Internet of Things, I mean, ubiquitous sensors can be embedded into city space. Um, for example, every street furniture can be equipped with a sensor. And uh, technology just really have, have impacted our daily life. For example, we have more and more screen time. We have a survey for Tsinghua University students. Our people, our students in average, averagely is spending around seven hours on mobile phone screen. So you can imagine our human being is in, in change, in transition, uh, driven by technologies. So in this way, I think we, uh, technologies and the built environment are more and more blended. And our built environment has been shifted or changed substantially by technologies. So I think we should not forget technology for built environment. Uh, I mean, uh, from, uh, I have two, two aspects uh, suggestion. First, uh, we should apply technology to understand our built environment to, to help create. Secondly, we should appreciate the impact of technologies on built environment. Since our human being and our built, uh, built environment is now the built environment 10 years ago, so that is my, my, my personal thinking. I mean, methodology, methodologically, we use technology to create, to help create. And essentially, all in nature, we should regard cities as new cities, I think. So that is my very preliminary thinking as well. However, my lab has been working in this way. We are trying to understand the so-called new cities shifted out, out all changed by technologies. That's it. 
Right, thank you. So we have very little time left for the Q&A session for Professor Longing, though I think this question will be really meaningful for our discussion panel. So question from Shi Yu is, except for the convenience technology has given us, many elder people or people without smartphones are facing extreme inconvenience during the pandemic. Once the health code are set as the only certificate of public space, how do we make the smart technology to be actually inclusive for everyone, but not exclusive? And I'd like to invite also Professor Qingming Zhan and Mr. Qian Rei to answer this question as well. And let's, and let's um, welcome our moderator, Wei Ping Wu, to um, facilitate our discussion. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful question to start the um, panel discussion. Maybe uh, Professor Long, you would want to answer that first, then we can invite the other uh, two colleagues to answer. Yes, thank you, Professor Wu. I think uh, technologies are really not uh, inclusive to everyone. And in my report, together with Tencent, I mean with space, we have proposed some questions or concerns on technologies with city space. I think uh, like, for example, we have digital divide and technologies may be also leading our cities to more segregated and to and uh, to uh, not uh, not this uh, uh, so called um, uh, to 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 uh, how to say um, to lead the cities more segregated and the polarization and even uh, segregated in terms of space and in terms of the for example income education as well. Uh, so I yeah, the main purpose for that report is to propose concerns about technologies and our built, envir uh, built environment to, to suggest every people, every planner and designer consider that. Uh, currently, we do not have a very good answer for that directly. Yeah, that's it, I think. Thank you. Um, Professor John or um, uh, Wilson? Uh, yes, uh, in terms of technology, uh, there are a variety of technology could be applied in urban and planning uh, area. Uh, actually, uh, I, I may show you some of these uh, efforts uh, if I just uh, put in this uh, screen share to you. Uh, okay, let me see. So before the outbreak of this uh, 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 academic COVID-19, we have uh, deployed some 28 uh, monitoring devices in campus of Wuhan University. And you can see if you click on the location, you will see the, 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 the monitoring, the temperature, the uh, hum uh, humidity, and uh, lighting and noisy things, and the temp uh, pressure, uh, PM 2.5, PM 2, uh, speed, wind speed, and wind direction, and CO2, and, and so on, right? Those provide uh, uh, enriched uh, information uh, about our uh, natural environment and the human environment. The monitoring, even the number of uh, uh, pedestrian pass through this uh, uh, location and number of vehicles uh, that uh, pass through this uh, location uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of every minute. Right, you can you can have this uh, very high frequency of uh, signals. Then you are able to understand the circumstance and what happening in certain events. So this provides a very real situation. So for planners and design to consider uh, those are the factors we have to uh, concentrate and look at more carefully, uh, at least. But on this, uh, all this uh, equipment are deployed just. Uh, less than one year. So we still uh, try to consider what could be uh, come up most out of this uh, detailed monitoring uh, data. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just an example. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Wilson or Mr. Tian, would you like to add to that? Yeah, uh, I'll like just add one point. Uh, I, I, I fully agree uh, that technology can help our uh, daily life can help our professions and uh, 
I observed that uh, uh, the way we're using technologies right now in our profession, planning and design is, is quite, uh, it's not the period that we're using a kind of software to, uh, uh, to speed up our working process, but it's reshape, restructure our, uh, our working procedures and the methods of we work. That's how we uh, use technologies in our profession, I think. But uh, uh, as for the question, I think for each kind of new technology, we need to have a transition period. Uh, it, during this period, we need to uh, uh, offer as much uh, as possible for the alternatives to all the groups of people that can use that, uh, will agree use that, or disagree with that. Uh, within this period, it, uh, I call that democracy of the uh, technology. It's, it's not. It's not like the uh, 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 in some situation like, like like the green code. In China, the government says green code or the, the healthy code is only way to to certificate that you are healthy. This th this is actually kind of ridiculous that we can see a lot of news on WeChat or uh, on the media. Elder people cannot use smartphone at all. So. This, this actual, actually shows uh, within this kind of challenge, massive challenge, we don't have much, uh, 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 we don't have enough preparations to, to offer the alternatives to people. If we can have the technologies, meanwhile, we have alternatives for people, I don't think uh, the question will be a question. Thank you. Uh, actually, this is this question of inclusion at exclusion also leads to sort of my next related question to all of you. Nearly all of your presentations touch upon a very critical issue of a new importance that is the private versus the public, right? And uh, how our conception is changing today, right? In the past, how individual, not in the long past, just before the lockdown, whether we wear masks, where, whether we keep social distance, how much we keep the personal bubble was all individual choice. But that individual choice now has consequences for a large set of people, right? And so Professor Jen's work in terms of looking accessibility you know, the lockdown of Wuhan really was for the benefit for the rest of the country. You know, the, the, the Wuhan residents bear, you know, bore the, the, the large um, uh, responsibility for containing that, right? So now we know at different scales, individual actions have implications for um, larger um, groups and even larger, you know, city as a whole. So um, how do you see that uh, shift um, maybe affecting how people uh, behave in urban space and how planners and designers are also reacting to different types of behaviors of individuals, right? I know I was just really shocked to see during the October 1st uh, vacation week, Chinese are traveling again. They're all crowded again. I, I just like, I, I, I said, how could that happen, right? I mean, US, we're still like completely uh, uh, forbidden, at least in New York City to do that. So is, you know, is this new shift in public versus private really reshaping people's behavior in urban space or is it just very temporary as you observe in uh, Chinese cities? I think I'll, I'll go first. Yes, to my please. observation, I think it reshapes our everyday life a lot already. I see many people, uh, uh, wearing masks as a, as a uh, daily life habit. And even, even to myself, uh, uh, I, will, I will always take a bag of like 10 masks just in case. <laughs> Do, during, because during, during the uh, uh, February and March, uh, uh, we're lack of masks. This, this is kind of a uh, uh, slow 
impacts to our everyday life. I believe this has happened to a lot of people. And uh, uh, as for the uh, uh, October 1st, the, the set eight days long holiday in the, in, in the last week, we see huge amount of people traveling out. Uh, uh, I think this is a natural reaction to, to, to the country being locked down for, for, for a long period. People being locked down in their gated communities, in their in their home for for really long long time, and we actually this is another point I also want to mention. The online working part is actually uh, more tire more tiresome uh, uh, for for us to to stay home work, stay home work. You don't have time to 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 talk to people, to meet uh, the the cafeteria people, to meet your barista. You don't have that time. You just work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep. So after that long period, we need time to travel. We need time to chill out. And October seems to be a, a, a quiet period. I, I, I still personally believe in late November or December where we will have uh, new challenges by COVID-19 or other virus like flu. Uh, we, will, we will have that coming up with, with our daily life. So. This period is, is quite nice time, time point for people living in the cities to release for a little bit. But still, I, 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 I totally agree with your uh, comments that it's a long existing situation and uh, it will reshape people's lifestyle a lot and reshape how we understand public space and private space. Uh, in Chinese cities, at least in cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Wuhan, this kind of uh, 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 cities with more than 10 million population, this, this kind of huge city. Yeah. Uh, I may say a few words. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, last week's Wuhan, actually, uh, universities in Wuhan have no vocation. All students remain in the campus. We given lectures during this week as well, <laughs> because it's just kind of a precaution measures. Uh, because, uh, uh, um, you know, cases in China, most of students stay in dormitory. Uh, some three or eight students stay in one big room. So if one effect will have uh, quickly uh, expanded to uh, all the campus. So uh, still university have been kept high alerts on this uh, carefully monitoring the situation. So we have a uh, first uh, October uh, national holiday and we have on vacation and second day we have to go class. So the, 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 the one week holiday have been break into uh, part or three parts. So people cannot go for a long weekend. <laughs> So to say, and uh, I have been also interviewed with some of my students in the class during last week and students uh, say it's acceptable to stay in campus because mm -hmm. they have been away from class face to face conversation for eight months or more or less. So they, they say they love to come and, and, and love to stay in the campus. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, this year uh, they, they accept it. Uh, mm. So this is uh, so, some cases just happening in, in Wuhan. Uh, uh, on the other hand, if we look at after the, the, the uh, first wave of a uh, uh, pandemic, uh, if we, we could improve our measurements uh, because of this uh, uh, effectiveness of the technology or green Q code and so on, and we could uh, focus on a more uh, uh, smaller uh, region or, or, or neighborhoods, if it is dangerous or less dangerous or uh, free from the virus, right? So the, the monetary scale could be uh, smaller uh, and smaller because you, you can, uh, if something happened again in Wuhan, I think the government will not, not, not going to lock a whole Wuhan. They, they are going to lock a Pacific, uh, 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 Pacific uh, district or neighborhoods. That, that uh, economical sounds better. And just like uh, what happening a uh, small uh, uh, academic in Beijing, people just look at uh, those neighborhoods in higher risk uh, and uh, not other 
people uh, uh, get some freedom to, to look around and move around. And that's uh, uh, better. It's, it's a kind of compensation between the complete lockdown and complete free to travel, mm. right? So we have to make a balance between freedom and the, the life itself. <laughs> So that is what I want to say for the time being. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so actually, I am a social scientist. I have been trained uh, with an engineering background. And actually, my lab is also with such philosophy or direction for our research. So for social aspect, we I only have the personal view, personal perspective, rather, uh, I mean, active, uh, academic research. So I think uh, currently in Tsinghua campus, on Tsinghua campus, uh, I think our uh, courses are also quite resilient. I mean, uh, we name it as the hybrid course. And for example, um, uh, currently the situation is really very good. So we can all have the offline course. I mean, in person, physically, in classrooms, and in case, the so COVID-19 or other flus or other virus, I mean, can spike. I mean, we can very flexibly adjust the organization for the course. For example, the whole offline, uh, from the whole offline to whole online or semi, uh, I mean, half, half, half online, half, uh, uh, half, uh, half online, half, uh, I mean, so-called offline. I think anyway, I think also, I think the resilient situation is also heavily re supported by technologies. Mm -hmm. so, so that is what uh, um, I think technology really is very important. However, uh, from the social issue, we have the, I mean, the digital divide, we have the segregation, we have, we have the inclusive We should Yeah, uh, we should consider that. However, in general, I think technologies help a lot for our, how we adjust our combating issue for COVID-19, from education, from work, from other, uh, uh, I mean, et cetera, issue. Mm -hmm. And I also happen to be staying in wilderness in, for several days in a uh, national holiday. I really enjoyed a lot, for, uh, personally, I camped. I enjoyed the wilderness in remote area, in Himalayan area. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh, with no screen time, with no screen phone, uh, sorry, mobile phone. I really enjoyed it, enjoyed it a lot as a human being. Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the nature. I will appreciate the the calm. Yeah. So I think a lot of people in China are saying, oh, COVID-19 will be coming back in in this November or December. However, I do not believe it personally. Yeah, I think it will be continuing. I mean the peace, the calm in the country. Maybe I am over, uh, over um, I mean, in so, uh, uh, over, 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 over positive for the situation. Yeah, yeah that's it. And as, as a human being, uh, we enjoy the calm, we enjoy the normal. Yeah, that's it, Professor Wu. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, we have a, comment in the chat box, which actually relates to my question for you, my pretty much the next final question for you all, is uh, what you just, your comments just now also point to the, um, the value that we place in human to human interactions and in human and nature interactions uh, that are um, often um, very much central to urban life, right? And uh, you know, this comment says, uh, go to the park with a mask is better than stay in an apartment with a mask, right? Uh, because the air conditioning system is better in the park. And you know, in US cities and in New York, um, there's a lot of talk, in New York is being affected a great deal, right? Uh, is, are we looking at a much lower kinds of density for urban living uh, as we move further and further and deeper into possibilities of similar pandemics? Are we also looking at different kinds of mobility patterns? Will people go back to bikes, walks, or driving, except 
we're not taking buses or you know uh, uh, um, subways, right? In New York, you could see that. So I would like to really hear a three, both all of you to maybe look. Let's say we have a crystal ball. What are you seeing uh, as the long lasting impacts of the um, pandemic? So may I? Yes, please. So actually, uh, um, I think still my personal thinking, I mean, the so-called long-lasting impact on issue for pandemic. I think, uh, I think just a message, our local story <laughs> uh, for the online education. So before, I think uh, the, the after-class education for younger students, like uh, primary students, middle school students, are very significant. And a lot of in Beijing, in Haidian, especially, actually. That is the center of the empire, <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, in that way. Actually, uh, actually before, almost uh, all the offline education, I mean, trainings are offline. And currently, uh, driven by the pandemic, more and more parents are open to online education. I mean, offline education. Sorry, I mean the online of class education for younger students. And I was told the income, the earnings for the online teachers. I mean, the salary is very high, around one million China yuan. At least one one million China yuan per year. I mean, currently, good skill, uh, I mean, good teachers are going online rather than offline. Maybe in the future, in the close future, in the remote future, they will not ever come back to offline. So, so I think the pandemic really teach a lot. Uh, I mean, teach us, all, uh, teach us a lot. Maybe before, we people are not Comfort, comfortable with online something like online meeting, online education. But right now, they like them a lot. Maybe, for example, if the pandemic, all the virus disappear in China, maybe we still online, <laughs> for example. I like online very much. I do not like travel to the other city for, for, for half a day and go back for the other half a day and just uh, deliver a lecture for 20 minutes. I do not like it. It, it is wasting my life, wasting my, my time, I think. And online is very easy. We can have, have breakfast uh, while I am delivering lecture. Yeah, I like it personally, still personally. Yeah, thank you. Yes, but actually there's a good benefit to that you reduce your carbon footprint as well. Yes, I think in general, I think pandemic has taught our human being to, to, to better welcoming technologies. I think it's the time. If we do not have pandemic, people will not be so comfortable with online or high tech something. Yep. May I? Yeah, uh, I, I agree with what uh, uh, Ying Long is saying. Uh, that uh, uh, the, the pandemic may change something uh, with us, right? As we can observe that the 2003, the SARS, they promote the, the, the popularity of this e-commerce, uh, e, e, e right? The Taobao and Alibaba and so on have been getting popular uh, since uh, SARS. Now I think uh, this uh, COVID-19 will change us, at least in online education, as uh, Ying Long is said. Uh, actually, what happened in Wuhan after this uh, pandemic, uh, we are free to travel to school and, and go to other places, but still we have uh, some one third of meetings uh, online, right? Uh, uh, it's easier for us to save time 
uh, and we even managed to have attend two meetings in the whole morning. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not possible to reach one and you forget about others, right? So, uh, uh, and, and also, uh, it's also easier for this international uh, communication, like uh, what's happening today. So we are in a different time zone, but we still uh, have no limits in terms of communication, right? Uh, this year, I even had the opportunity to, to attend the PhD defense of my son. He, ha he had the PhD title in UCLA in Los Angeles. And because of the time difference, we, we wake up in early morning at five o'clock and uh, uh, following the, the defense process. And yeah, it's a very good experience for us as well. Otherwise, it, without this online uh, po possibility, we, we will miss this uh, defense event. Uh, with just an example. And uh, I think uh, just uh, in long also say, uh, travel between different cities and just give a short lecture, a guest lecture and so on, it's also uh, not time efficient and also low carbon <laughs> uh, effective. So uh, I, I can see in the, in the near future, longer run, uh, you can see the, the uh, uh, that's online meetings and discussion e, uh, online business and, and so on. Uh, even uh, com uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, communication discussion between colleagues, and even in the same city, could be popular, right? Uh, which is a uh, very positive things for 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 our to to uh, at least uh, for solving some of the traffic issues and traffic jams and so on, and give a lot contribution to that and uh, and save a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> energy uh, in, in, in reality. And we have some more time to go to Oscar for excursion instead of getting crowd to have meetings together. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm not sure if um, Wilson is still here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Do you want to chime in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to add uh, at one point. Uh, besides practices with ACOM, I also teach. Uh, I teach urban design at Beijing University of Civil Engineering and Architecture. Uh, thanks to online teaching, I had two studio last semester. Uh, one is undergrad thesis, one is the fourth year urban design studio. And uh, I can with ACOMS projects and teaching. So like, like what uh, Professor Longing and Professor Zhang just said, uh, actually online education is I think it's a great thing for uh, education per se, for education itself. Uh, we will have more uh, choices for, for the combination of courses of the uh, faculties. And uh, uh, go, going back to your question about density, I remember you mentioned density, uh, uh, the impacts to density. I'm, I myself is a believer to density. So, so I think uh, given we have much more uh, uh, flexibil flexibilities to teach, to work home, work from home, or work from uh, elsewhere like cafes, or work from in the parks. So I think there will be uh, much more variations of density. It, it doesn't have to be higher or lower, but in China we will observe, I, I, I truly believe we will observe uh, more variation of density in, in, in urban context. Uh, we, we will see a lot of even new uh, type of working like in ACOM Beijing, now we are proposing uh, 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 at least one day of a week, one day or two of a week, you can work from home, and it will you will, you will be uh, guaranteed with uh, with a perfect network and technology guarantee. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to 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 see in China actually. Thank you all very much. I mean, this is. Um making me feeling a little bit better that <laughs> we are always we are all doing only <laughs> connecting online um, but uh, you know seeing you being so um, optimistic uh, makes me feel better so again thanks very much I'll hand it off to the students to close for today's uh, session thank you yeah uh, thanks for the discussion. It was an insightful session with our 
uh, guest speakers, and I, I believe it inspires all of us for our future studies or practices to understand public and private and exclusion for inclusion. So with that, we'll end today's forum. And um, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 a.m. China Standard Time, we will start day two for the forum. Yeah, um, we'll start day two of, of the forum in the same meeting room. There will be four speakers joining and two topics covered. Topic technology and smart planning will be joined by Professor Zhi Qiangwu from <coughs> Tongji University and Mr. Ya Ming Xu from World Economic Forum China. The topic of resilient and healthy city will be discussed by Mr. Dai Zongliu from World Resource Institute China and Professor Lan Wang from Tongji University. Again, our speech title and detailed schedule has been posted in the chat box for your references. Thanks again for attending and we look forward to seeing you all here tomorrow. You may okay. leave now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Hope to see you in person at some point. <laughs>